The birth of Christ is news. Two unbelievers' first lesson, Matthew chapter 1 verse 25, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Second lesson, Luke chapter 2 verse 7, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Golden text, Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down, and worshipped him, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and ma. Brethren, I bring you good tidings, tidings that are both old and new. Imagine someone sends you a parcel and for twenty years you have not opened the parcel and so do not know the contents. The parcel may contain all your needs, money and other necessities, but you keep suffering because you do not know that all your life's needs are contained in the parcel in your possession. One day somebody comes by and sees the parcel and asks you why you have not opened it. You then open it and discover that you have been suffering in the midst of plenty. The contents of the parcel are new to you but the parcel had been with you for donkey years. The Christ was before the beginning that is exactly the story of our Lord Jesus Christ vis-a-vis -vis the world. Some say that he was born today, 25th of December, others say that he has not yet come while many declare that he was born a long time ago. If you examine the scriptures you will find that there is nothing new. Our Lord Jesus Christ was in existence before the foundations of this earth were laid. He and the Father existed when the world was created. The very first person on this earth plane, Adam, was Christ. If not so, God would not have given him dominion over all creation and would not have authorized him to give names to all things created. I want to assume that you know that his kingdom has no beginning and no end. The fact that he was born, died and resurrected does not mean that that is all about him. No, he has always been and he is here among men but people do not know him. He is everywhere but the pity is that nobody recognizes him. In one of his many dialogues with the Jews, he referred them to Jacob's well and they were utterly surprised to hear him talk like an eyewitness about something that happened thousands of years before him and before their father, Abraham. To set the record straight, he told them that, before Abraham, I am. You cannot discern the scriptures with human wisdom neither can flesh and blood understand the words. If you try to trace the history and genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ you will come short because he was in existence before Abraham. Why we say that our Lord is of the root of Abraham is because of the covenant he made with Abraham when he said, you will beget a son who will rule heaven and earth. That did not mean that he had not been in existence, he has ever been in existence. On another occasion the Jews accosted him and asked, Every time you tell us that the Lord said this and the Lord said that, where is this God? They were asking all those questions because they were anxious to know him. He explained to them that the word had become flesh and is dwelling among men. You all are witnesses of his glory today. The three wise men recognized him in spirit and traveled very far to come and bow to him and present him gifts. So, brethren, flesh and blood cannot know him. Christ is the word what do the scriptures say? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. From that passage it is evident that all creation come from him, the word. After creating Adam he created none else. He only took one rib from Adam to create Eve and so Eve was part of Adam and Adam was part of Eve. If Eve came from Adam and Adam from Eve, what then do you think about creation? If you want to trace the line of our Lord Jesus Christ you will end up with Adam. Let me ask you this, who was the Blessed Virgin Mary? She was Christ. That is to say that Eve came out of Adam and our Lord Jesus Christ came out of Mary. Just as it is mysterious for a man to come out of a woman, so is creation a mystery. I want you to know that Adam and Eve constitute this one God, Christ, just as Jesus and Mary constitute the same one God, Christ. Now, who were the mother, father and brother of Adam? Is it not yet clear to you that Adam the Christ is God and God is Adam? Do you hear that statement, let us make man in our own image? If you believe and subscribe to that statement, why do you still doubt? 
Why do we doubt that Christ is the King and Master over all creation? He controls the waters, the earth, man and all dominions. It is not important that you come to fast and pray and worry yourselves unnecessarily. All your needs have already been provided. As God cannot die, so Christ cannot die because he is the controller of death and Hades and heaven and earth. He consistently reaffirms that he and the Father are one. Just as the parcel, in my earlier illustration, remained unwrapped, so Christ remains unraveled as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. He is omnipresent and in all things. Just believe in him, recognize him as God and worship him. The Pharisees doubted him because they knew his father and mother. They wrongly assumed that the parentage of the expected Messiah would not be known. It is high time you recognized him in this dispensation because the time has come. Our Lord Jesus Christ can assume the form of a woman, man or young girl. He can change and become a flame of fire. He can take any form to achieve his divine will. During the transfiguration, three persons were seen, Moses, Elijah and Christ. Do not be deceived. It was our Lord Jesus Christ in three different forms. Do you remember the voice that proclaimed, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. It was the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us hear the first lesson again. First lesson, Matthew chapter 1 verse 25, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Why do you say that other people are worshipping man? Is there any reason why you cannot worship man? Do you not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is a man? He is God and he is man. Do you not believe that he is in you, that he is a consuming fire and that water cleanses all impurities? Do you have any reason for questioning his authority? Do you know that the more you try to unravel the mystery of God the more confused and confounded you get? He said, Blessed are they that believe without sin. The Israelites desired to see God face to face but when they saw him they did not believe in him. Ask yourselves the following questions, did the people of old like the high priest, the Pharisees and the Levites believe in him? Did the scientists know our Lord Jesus Christ? Did Herod know him? It was their refusal to recognize him that made them stumble and fall. It is said that a careful child has to beware lest what killed his father will kill him. He is everything and in everything and does everything everywhere our Lord Jesus Christ was killed simply because he said that he and the Father are one. They wondered why he, being man, made himself equal to God. Christ replied and said to them, It is written in the scriptures that ye are gods. If he can be called gods and the scriptures are not broken, how much more I that come from God, if you do not believe in me, believe me for my work's sake. Is there any person who can do the works he did? If you say that he is God and not man, was he not born of a woman, Virgin Mary? Any person born by a woman is a human being. If you regard him as an ordinary man, could his brothers do what he did? This is where we all come short of the scriptures. The scriptures clearly state that a child was born and that his name was Jesus. This was not an ordinary child but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How do you think he would forsake his own and go somewhere that nobody knows? He is in heaven, on earth, in the waters. All powers are under his control. Do you believe that before he was born he was already on earth doing his work as he was commissioned to do? Our Lord Jesus Christ was the stone that David put in his sling that killed Goliath. He is the seas, trees and all things animate and inanimate. Moses struck the rock and water oozed out. That rock was Christ. Put your request before him and be sure they will be granted. He has assured you that whatever you ask the Father in his name will be given to you. If you have recognized him as your Lord and Master then call on him at all times for solutions to all your problems. He knows when you are in need of money and that is why when you visited someone he gave you money as a gift. It was not that person but Christ who gave you the money. Whenever you are stranded or have any problem, simply bow your forehead to the ground and relief will come your way. If you lack transport money, just bow your forehead to the ground and have faith and in a short while a vehicle going your way will pull up and give you a lift or someone will volunteer to pay your fare. It is not people but our Lord Jesus Christ that does all these and other things. 
Second lesson, Luke chapter 2 verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Do you know why all these facts were recorded? They were recorded so that people would not deceive you into believing that our Lord Jesus Christ is not a man. Whoever does not believe that Christ is a human being, that he is come in flesh and blood, is an antichrist. During his ascension, the angels who stood by told his apostles that this same Jesus who you see being taken up into heaven will come back in like manner. Christ himself said to his apostles, I will never leave you comfortless. That is why he came back as a human being so that you may recognize and worship him. You should beware of those who tell you not to worship man because they are leading you to destruction. You all know him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So was it worth it for him to forsake his glory and come into this world of politics. He had to come and die and come back again so that what was done to the Jews will equally be done to the Gentiles. As you come here during this season you must emulate the three wise men by not talking too much but by action because faith without work is dead. You can bear me out that one has to renew one's car, television and radio licenses every year. In other words your love for him must be practical. Golden text, Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down, and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and ma. You are saying that if you were there in those days you would have done one thing or another. Well, that same Lord is the one you have come now to worship. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. Whatever you imagine you would have done, do it now. He is ever present. You claim that you know him. You do well but the devil also believes in him and recognizes him. If you do not show your love practically it means that you do not believe in him. If you believe that he is here on earth walking, then you must do as the three wise men did. There were many like you those days that did not have practical faith. The three wise men did not go to receive prayers or to be healed of their infirmities or to request for children or wealth. You are aware that there was nothing the little baby would have done for them. The three wise men went to offer him gifts and to worship him because of the star they saw that made them recognize his kingship. If you believe in him you will emulate the three wise men, not because he healed you or did anything for you but because he is God. Today everybody recognizes his immaculate lordship and today is the day to commemorate his birth. We are debtors, not to the flesh, but to our Lord Jesus Christ and as such we have to live a life of gratitude every day of our life. Today is unique and special for he brings you peace, love, mercy and forgiveness. You should thank him. The Christmas occasion does not call for drinking, smoking, immorality or disorderly conduct. This is the season when love and all good things fall like a gentle rain from heaven and to qualify to receive these blessings, you must behave in a God-fearing manner. I am broadcasting this to the world that they love one another, show sympathy, share fellowship and do good to all. As children of God we are not to discriminate so that we may have the right of sonship. Whatever you do to him has its reward. If you do good you have a commensurate reward. If you do bad you will also reap what you sow, all those who call themselves Christians should live their life such that those who see them may walk in their light. I will not take you further. He that hath ears to hear let him hear and may God bless his holy word. Amen.